So what does Ansible actually look like from a, a product offering standpoint? Like I said, Red Hat, everything we do, we have an upstream first mentality. Everything's about an open source project. Ansible has two open source projects that really uh, formulate what Ansible is. At the bottom, we've got Ansible. You'll hear me call it Ansible, Ansible Core, Ansible Community. Um, I think those are the, predominantly the three names that I, I use. Um, but that's what you see. You go to GitHub, that's the code. You want to you wanna contribute, that's the code. <clears throat> that's Ansible. On top of that, we've got another project called AWX. AWX is our operational environment that overlays on top of Ansible. Now, this is an interesting little fact. We'll get into um, this a little bit more as, as we go forward. But, but Ansible, unlike other um, solutions out there, a lot of automation, not even just automation, a lot of open source communities offer you what they call a free core implementation or an open source core implementation. What that means is they give away the core of their product, but by and large, there isn't a whole lot there, right? Yes, it's free and it's open source. and You can do whatever you want with it, but really all the good stuff, you got to go buy their enterprise product, right, to get all of that. And that's what open core is. Ansible does not adhere to that model. AWX, or Ansible Tower, as our product name is called, is not an enterprise version of Ansible. We have Ansible and AWX, which wraps around it. Well, actually, when we, I'm going to go through some tower stuff. We're going to talk a little bit about what that means and why that's very important. But everything you get is available right here in this GitHub. Now, we sell something called Red Hat Ansible Engine. So when I say Ansible Engine, I'm talking about this thing over here that Red Hat sells. From a code standpoint, it's no different. The code that you get from Red Hat is the same code you got from GitHub. What Red Hat has done is it's, in its truest form, put an SLA around Ansible. And essentially, what that means for our customers is that means you get the full power of Red Hat, the full weight of Red Hat behind Ansible. That means if it's broke, you've got a phone number, you've got an email address that you can pick up and call, you've got an SLA-backed support infrastructure that's going to make sure that you're not down for a significant period of time. If it's a bug, we're going to get it fixed, and there's somebody who's walking it through every step of the way. There's someone you can get in touch with, especially in networking, and this is really key for our, uh, many of our networking customers, right, is that for right, wrong, or indifferent, and, and I'm sure this could spark an interesting debate, but many organizations still say, my network is my IP. I can't share with you my network design. I can't share with you my network configurations. And we can always get into a very spirited debate of how true that is. But in, for our customers, it gives them a safe place where if they need to share with us diagrams or configuration information or model information, they can do it in a secure way. They don't have to go out and use GitHub issues and put it out in the public domain. So just a question on that. It's, yeah. This is, this is you know, commercially supported mm -hmm. the version of Ansible. So you know, if I want to spin it up for a team or one of my clients, yep. this is not just Break fix. I mean, do you also, if I'm saying, hey, I'm trying to build this playbook and it's not working for me, and I just I don't get it because I'm new, mm -hmm. and that's something that the commercially supported would help with if you don't want to go scour the forums all day. That's long. correct. That's what that product exists for. That's correct. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely Great. correct. And then on top of that, we've got Tower and Tower, essentially the same thing. As I said, Tower wraps around Ansible. We'll, we'll look at what Tower is here in, in a few. But for the moment, takeaway from this slide is that. Understanding that Ansible is the automation engine, Tower is an operational framework. It's not Ansible and the enterprise version of Ansible because there's no such thing. So, um, how is that priced? I'm just curious. How is the what does the licensing look like for how the, how you how do you consume that product per IP endpoint? Okay, gotcha. Which is that's why I'm always careful not to say per node. Okay. Because in virtualization and containerization world, that changes. Okay. So the larger your environment, the the, the higher the licensing mm -hmm. cost, and correspondingly, the less that you do. You so that's correct. Also, okay. That's exactly right. Yep. Okay. So Ansible Engine and Ansible Tower come together to create our entire framework. Um, I've got a couple of marketing-ish slides in here. This is one of them. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on market-ish slides, but um, you know, I think it just kind of underscores just how the different pieces ultimately come together to ultimately deliver automation for our customers. Some customers use Ansible Tower, some use Ansible Engine. And, and we're going to talk about some of the differences in, in, and you know, when Tower makes sense and, and maybe when Tower doesn't make sense. Um, but at, at the end of the day, this is just kind of all the different pieces and parts and, and how Ansible ultimately uh, looks from a, a holistic view standpoint. We like to talk about Ansible, though, as being a universal language. 
And, you know, I talked earlier about this idea of simplicity within Ansible. And that Ansible playbook should read more like a document than necessarily a script or source code or something along those lines. And a lot of organizations can start to coalesce around the Ansible playbook. You know, we always had this thought, this mantra that, that I should be able to take a playbook that's written by an engineer who has a very specific domain knowledge, and his manager or his manager's manager or an executive should be able to look at that playbook. And they may not be able to tell you everything that's going on, but they should be able to read that thing and get a general idea of what that playbook did. And that's a lot of the idea behind Ansible. Now, some of that's gotten munged over the years. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this. We get a little further into this. Because there's a lot of folks in the Ansible environment that want to take Ansible down to the eerie, eerie, eerie dark places, right? Places that Ansible was not designed to go. We, we spend a lot of time in the community, in forums, industry forums, and in customer meetings, trying to explain that Ansible is not a programming language. We don't want it to be a programming language. And yet, invariably, we'll find someone trying to take it down that path. Uh, Ansible is meant to be an automation language. That's it, full stop, nothing more. We don't orchestrate end-to-end -end service, uh, services. We automate the orchestration of end-to-end -end services. Or maybe better put, we automate bits and pieces of the necessary components to orchestrate the end-to-end -end service. Maybe that's an even better way to describe it. So how do we bring teams together? As I said, it's the concept of the playbook. And it's this idea that there are multiple contributors to a playbook. And some of our most successful deployments, especially in networking, and, and I geared this a little bit towards networking, is it allows teams to start to work better together. What we're trying to do is we're trying to help organizations bridge some of those silos that have been established from years and years and years of distrust within corporate IT. Right? The operations team that doesn't, uh, that doesn't trust the engineering team, or maybe the other way around, the engineering team that doesn't trust the operations team to do anything. The security guy who doesn't trust anybody. Right? The, the architects that, that they know everything and, and they've got it all figured out and, and therefore you know, everyone else uh, you know, doesn't know what to do here. So, so we talk about coalescing around the, the playbook and we've been very successful in working with some of our customers around this concept. Um, we've got some really interesting stories that we can tell, and I'll, I'll give you kind of the, 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 uh, the abstracted version of it. Um, but we've got some really interesting stories of organizations that have leveraged the concept of the playbook to start to build virtual teams that cross disciplines in IT. Could you imagine a very large organization when they want to deploy a new application, the first thing that they do is they have a, a, a sit-down discussion, literally in a room, a sit-down discussion. That's weird these days in and of itself. But they all get together in a room, and you've got a guy there from systems and a gal there from the app dev and another, folk, or another person there from storage and from network. And instead of them spending an hour just trying to figure out how to communicate, right, because we all have different vernaculars. We all come from different perspectives. Um, you know, my favorite is always getting into the, the, I always love it when I see a Linux person and a network person sit down together and watch them spend 30 minutes to figure out before they realize that a, um, a bonded port and a port channel are the same thing. <laughs> Wait, they are? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? I love it. Or, or, or my good friends over on the OpenStack team who want to keep talking to me about segmentation IDs. It's a VLAN, <laughs> folks. Come on. It's not that hard. Um, but we actually have organizations that have, have started to really coalesce around this idea of a playbook. And, and, and what it's helped for the organization is they can actually start to build out these services, build out these applications that encompass um, really all aspects of, of their IT infrastructure. <laughs> 